I have never, <laughs> I will never regret or pick any man over my children. Yeah. Because <laughs> no man is worth my kids. If yeah. anything, I've never even had any man worth choosing him over my kids. Sure, sure, you know? sure. So no, I've never neglected my kids over a man. Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Uh, something funny that I've, I'm experiencing. So in my studio in Joburg, mm -hmm. I have these big chairs that everybody, every time when a, a guest comes onto the show, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, your chairs are so big and now my feet are hanging. Today it's my feet. <laughs> 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 like, I'm feeling tall and, in, I mean, short and insecure. I'm oh, like, oh, so this is what the guests the always guests feel. Always feel <laughs> uh, I'm in your land now, I'm in yes, Durban. Yes. We had Radisson Bloom Sanga in Durban. Yes. Um, this is your home. It is. Uh, why, why should I be in Durban? I mean, I don't like this place. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, because you came here for me. Yes. You know, uh, the importance. Very true. Very the, true. The importance. Plus, we have the ocean. You have the you ocean. Yeah, have, yeah, absolutely. You know, because I'm, I'm sure you guys wanted something like this. Yeah. Hence, the fake beach. It <laughs> so we are not faking it this side. We have it. Ne? Yes. Uh, the air is very refreshing here as well. I really feel revived. Something's different. I mean, mm. something about Umtlanga, mm. Radisson Blue is, is very exciting. Amy, welcome to Engineer Your Life. Thank you. It's for a pleasure. Me. I've been trying this for a while, even before you went on The Real Housewives of Durban, but everything in God's good time. Mm. Yes, absolutely. I always say that young kid is cut side. Yeah, yeah. Has love been kind to you? Has love been kind to me? No, no, no. Not really? all the time. Yeah. You know, I've I've had moments mm -hmm. where love was, mm -hmm. and I've had moments when it wasn't. Just like everyone else. Why do you think then, particularly that love that hasn't been kind to you has given people so much drama and things to talk about? When, as you're saying, it happens to all of us. I mean, I have people that I've been in relationships with that I've ended and it hasn't been nice. I've gone through the pains, the healing, insecurities, you know, the emotions, something that we all go through. Why do you think particularly people are so interested in making yours seem like it's bigger than their normal struggles? You know, I always say that some people will pick on you and your struggles just to make themselves feel better sure, about their own struggles. Sure, sure. You know, because you cannot tell me that I'm the first woman that has been unlucky in marriage. Mm -hmm. You cannot tell me that I'm the first woman to experience GPV. Yeah, and it's yeah, so crazy yeah. how people actually make fun of it. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, it's so crazy how it, it ends up being um, gossip. 
Y- yeah. How is yeah. it landing it's on, reduced on, to on, on blogs? Yeah. You know, how is it something that excites you? Mm-hmm. And I, I just always say that um, you just have to be a special kind of a person for people to want to talk about you. Sure. Because sure, it's not sure. everyone that is on people's tongues. You know, there has to be something about you. So for me, I feel like it's something that has always followed me. Mm -hmm. You know, even before I decided to be in the public eye. You know, I've just always had that. I've always had something about me. People want to know Mm -hmm. who Mm -hmm. is she, you know. What is she about? What is she she about? You know, so to an extent. So I don't really take it personal when people try to come at me with Mm -hmm. my marriage and stuff. It's what they know. It's all they know because I'm a private person. So that is the only thing that they can pick on on about me. And consistently, that's what they're trying. That's why it's been consistent. Yeah. This thing has been going on for years now. It's been how many, two years now since 2022. You can't tell me that's the only thing you have on me. (laughs) You speak of that you've just always known that you're a person of interest. Do you think somehow your purpose is linked to being a public figure? It's linked to changing lives. I mean, I'll even attach it to, we'll go into the spiritual element of how you're discovering your purpose there. But do you think your your purpose involves people? I definitely think my yeah. purpose um, involves people. Besides the fact that I do come from a, a background, a background of entertainment. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I just feel like my purpose is just to be there, mm-hmm. and and I feel I always attract broken souls sure. to a point whereby you, c- I can't even differentiate now when I actually have to exit the okay. chat. Okay. You know, I feel like sometimes I'm just that kind of a person that always wants to give a person a chance, yeah. whether it's yeah. in friendship or, yeah. you know, in love, you know. So I just end up now finding myself in situations that don't need me. So I do feel like I'm a person that, you know, um, attracts broken people mm-hmm. and for a reason. Do you think you're living your purpose right now? I'm definitely living my purpose right mm-hmm. now. You know, I've, I currently have an, M- an NPO mm-hmm. that has been running, you know, um, so it helps um, children who are from um, less fortunate backgrounds. Okay. But um, I focus on um, girl child, okay. children, yeah. because I know how it is to not, not have anyone. Sure. So I'm on. trying yeah. to be that person for them. I'm trying to be a mom to them. You know, my friends, when they joke, they always call me the mother of the nation. Yeah, because yeah. one thing about me, I will always associate myself with children mm-hmm. because they have the purest of souls, mm-hmm. you know, and we are trying to now not damage the purity of these oh. souls. So that's where I come in now with trying to lend a hand. It actually makes sense because um, in everything, there is something that you're very consistent about mm. is that children must be protected. Of course. Um, right down to your own children. Yes. I mean, why for you are children so important in society and why should children be protected at all costs? For me, I feel like it's very important to make sure that children are always protected at mm-hmm. all costs because um, we already, you can see this generation. Yeah. We already have such a, a broken generation, you know. So I'm not, I don't want to raise pro- broken humans. I'm not trying to raise a broken man you know, with hmm. my son. I don't want my daughter to feel like it's okay um, to persevere even when you shouldn't. I wanted to know her, her worth. Yeah. And I wanted to know when to exit a chat. Sure. And I wanted to always know her, her worth, you know. So for me, I feel like children are a big part of society, of the world, yeah, if yeah. anything, because they are leaders of tomorrow. Co- correct. You're speaking of you want your daughter to know when to exit something that no longer serves her. Um, most women, though, would disagree with you. Uh, a large number of women are still very conservative and traditional and are against divorce. They're against exiting relationships that no longer serve you. Um, why is it important for women to choose themselves? Because for so long, women have been taught to subordinate to men. Um, you know what? That's where it, 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 it all just is wrong. I'm trying to raise my daughter differently from what um, I know as well. You know, so when I say no, I've, it's not something I've experienced at home. I was raised by very strong, independent women. Sure. So it was easy for me to say, listen, it is not, this is not for me, especially when I had my daughter. Because when I had my daughter, I knew I had to make different decisions in life. I knew that there were so many chats that I had to exit, you know, because I have to set an example. I can't say to Amani, um, babe, you can't do this while I'm doing it. I can't say um, a, an abusive relationship is wrong when I'm in an abusive when you're relationship, in one. Yeah, yeah. you know. So for me, I just wanted to know that she needs to be independent because most of the times women stay in situations because they are scared to leave. They are scared because they can't 
Um, take care of themselves take care of yeah themselves, financially especially yeah. financially but you know what i realized i realized that it's not just financially mm-hmm. because i mean we all have the same 24 hours in a day hmm. you know women do go to school because sometimes you will find that even doctors stay in marriages that don't, no longer serve them so it's not only it's women not only, who don't have money who stay yes. and that's a wrong narrative that has been pushed it's only people it's who don't have money, money stay yeah so i feel like it's also um, emotional independence. Sure. Emotional independence is, is a thing for us mm-hmm. women. Mm-hmm. We are so scared to not have someone in our lives. Yeah. You know, I have to have a plus one wherever I go. You know, it's a thing. What are they going to say in Gasekai when I leave my marriage? You know, for me, like it's a, it's a mocking thing. So that's why I say people will try to attack you with things that they cannot, they don't have the power or strength to actually do. I, I, I want to backtrack a bit. Um, so when did you have your daughter? Because it seems like there's a certain shift that happened to you when you had her specifically. Sure. <laughs> I had my daughter when I was very young. I was 20. Yeah. Oh, come on. Not that young. I was young. <laughs> Let me tell you, I was young when I had my daughter. And it just goes back to this thing of, um, I don't want to say, because the background I come from is a very strict background. Okay. But I feel like they were too strict for me to be able to open up about certain things. Okay, I hear you. I you hear get. you. Yeah. So I wish that they were not so strict and closed off. Yeah. And they made it easy for me to communicate sure. certain things yeah. with them. Yeah. And, you know, to be quite honest with you, I had her when I had lost my mom. Mm-hmm. And I feel like there was just this space. This void you this were trying to fill. This void I was trying to fill. And I'm not saying that I didn't get support from mm-hmm. my family. It's just something that you cannot really explain. So I'm trying to avoid that mm-hmm. with, with, with my daughter. That's why I'm so protective yeah, of, yeah. of my baby. Speaking of your children, they seem to be, uh, once again, you're very protective of your children. And you are very, how can I put this? You, you, you don't react, but you're very assertive and you address something when somebody tries to attack something that has got to do you, with your kids. For the sake of people getting an answer, did you neglect your kids for a man? I have never, <laughs> I will never regret or pick any man over my children. Yeah. Because <laughs> no man is worth my kids. If yeah. anything, I've never even had any man worth choosing him over my kids. Sure, sure, you know, sure. So no, I've never neglected my kids over a man. So that was a, yeah, those are con. Those who Let know, know. You, those who know, know. That's yeah. why I was saying, even my people were like, we know you. Some people actually followed me because of yeah. how, how much I love my kids. True, people true. Followed the me relationship because of you my, have with your kids the, online the as well. Yes. So that's why people actually followed me. More with my daughter, because she loves the camera. My son, very shy, hates the camera. You know, we force him to take snaps. But I've, I've always been in my kids' lives. To a point where I, I have been the only parent in their lives. So for someone to try and make the only thing, the one thing actually I've been so consistent in, motherhood, and you decide to ne? to attack that, yeah, you tarnish yeah, that, yeah, I could yeah. never, not my kids, not Amani, not mm. Noto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy, what, what makes a marriage like the one you had, which you had given your heart, your soul, um, your everything into, what, what are the fundamentals that makes a marriage break down? Um, you know, I will say this without blinking without flinching, without thinking twice. It is always the other woman who's willing to understand. Hmm. That's where the problem begins. Because, hmm. you know, when you have problems in your marriage and there's an out third party, the third party, I will always say, the same thing I always say to my friends, is the poison. Because they will start now saying things into your ear. And when you get home, you start seeing these things. Whereas when you are fixing things together as a team, it's not easy for that marriage to break. Sure. But once you invite a third party into the uh, equation, it's a problem. Someone out there is going to say, though, that it's your man who said yes to you, who watched you walk down the aisle and confessed in front of God that this is my woman forever and ever. Why are you blaming the third party? Why is it so significant that the third party is a poison? Can I tell you one thing? Yeah. Um, I say this because in most cases... It'll always be a girl you know. Eesh. And I they did, want your life. They want your life. Yeah. And I did say that this to you. I've always been a person of interest. Mm, mm. So there's people that will always go to your page and they will think, because let me tell you something. I posted about my marriage. Yeah. I loved my husband. Of course. You know, I had a very good marriage. Yeah. I won't lie. Yeah. So how everything just 
took a, a U-turn for me. It was so crazy mm -hmm. to a point where I, I slipped into depression like nobody's business. Yeah. I'm not a person that easily breaks down. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm always a go-to person for everyone, friends, family, you know. So it really, really damaged me. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. and now going back to, it's always someone that knows you mm, or, mm, or mm. knows of you. Mm. They always want this life. Mm. And in most cases, see Pila man just cutting as if I, as if I, whereby, because they want what Amy has. In fact, they want what they think you have. Because they don't know the nitty gritties. They, don't know. they know the problems. In, once you come in here, in the four walls, they don't know what's really you happening. You are going to have a problem. Yeah, you yeah. are going to have a problem, and it it is so unfortunate where because men don't think um like us. They don't think like us women. Mm. Yeah, yeah. In most cases, they're always selfish. Yeah, you understand. Yeah. So it affects so many people, and you know we can look at it and say, ah, you know. In Ghana, that's why I, I will go back to protecting kids. It's so yeah, important yeah, to protect yeah. children because I can definitely even now I'm dialed or put the stability. The stability is the most important thing because I don't care how harsh the world is outside, but when you know that when I get home, when I see mom there, when I see dad there, I know everything's going to be okay. So when you now take away that hope from hmm. them, it really just, you know, it, it destroys them. I've, I've said this to many guests who've been on that chair that um, the cornerstone of humanity is family. And men, when they break their families or take a decision to listen to the poison, they don't realize that they're actually destroying everything. With that being said, yeah. we also play a role, yeah. you know, uh, in some cases. Mm -hmm. Because as women, our nature, it's in our DNA. We are emotional creatures. Mm -hmm. You don't get into so sometimes the decisions we make and how we retaliate to our marital problems I hear you. could actually be yes, in, in, yeah, in, in destroying yeah. it, yeah. you know. But it, 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 we can't help it. Because I always say that if you are good to me and you are gentle to me, mm. Mina, I will be submissive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's easy to be submissive to a man that protects you. That's a leader. That's a leader. That's a real true leader. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and you, yeah. one thing about me, I'm a very strong person. I've got a strong character. You know, I'm mentally strong. So it, it's very important for me to have a man that's going to be a leader, a real leader. How does it erode to a point where, yeah, I, I can see the infidelity happening, people um, yearn for other people, lust, poison, as you're saying, but how does it erode to a point where there's GBV? Like, when does it get there? I mean... You know how it actually escalates to that? Is, 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 is it, it escalates to GBV when now we are arguing all the time okay. in the house. And there's the only, no longer peace. There's, no there's longer always peace. these verbal confrontations. People are being mean towards each towards other. Towards each other. You are coming back at, at 3 a.m. in the house and you don't expect me to ask you questions. And now I keep quiet until I can't. Mm -hmm. So now you're hurting me by your actions. So how am I going to hurt you? With words as a woman. Sure, because so that's your that's your tool. My fighting mechanism. Your fighting mechanism, yes, so exactly. So once now I bring out my fighting mechanism, which is verbal, you are, I'm going to say things that are going to hurt you because mm -hmm. that's what I'm trying to do. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to hurt you because I want you to feel the pain you are that causing I'm feeling. me. So it, 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 that's how it actually begins. And yeah. then now you're upset and then now you start laying a hand on me. And once it starts, it never ends. Hmm. How long did it happen, if you don't mind sharing? How long were you... In that situation for? I was in that situation for quite a, a period of time. But, you know, um, I, the one thing I always made sure was to protect my kids. I not made show sure them. that they would not hear me cry. Hmm. I would make sure that um, the door is closed, even if it means it's, it's just me jumping over to close the door, just so that they don't hear what was happening in the other room, hmm. you know. But one thing I know for sure is that um, it's something that I'm never willing to, to put myself through. You know, and I was young, you know, he got me when I was young mm. and very naive. Sure. And I, I, I think more than anything is that us women, we get into this and we are willing to be submissive. We are willing to give you everything, my heart and, 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 and all. And we allow this control. And when you grow up, because you are young when you are getting to this marriage and then you grow up, you, you, you evolve. You become someone else because they're cooler every single day. Yeah. I'm not the same Amy that you met yesterday, last week, mm. last month. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. So now I'm going to start questioning you. 
you know, you're going to say something, I'm going to say why. Whereas before I used to say yes. Yeah, yeah. Now there's yeah, a why. Yeah. And then after the why, there's a no. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. it, it, it just all comes down to that. Um, there's a young girl out there. You just said that when your husband found you, you were very young. There's a young girl out there because of Instagram, because of social media, who aspires, by the way, to buy a Porsche every month, like what's happening <laughs> on social media these Crazy days. Crazy business. Right? She's 22 and she looks up to that culture to that culture of living large, very young. Do you advise such a life at that young age? First of all, I don't even advise social media. Hmm. Secondly, that is not the life. People will portray what you want them to think of you. I always say that people that overpost and overshare are insecure mm. because why do you need my validation? If your life is really what you are, I always say, I always make this example. It's like when you have a car, that, you know, it, it, now it's typical because I'm making an example of a car. Let me say a bag. <laughs> if you have a, 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 a Louis Vuitton bag, yeah. for an example, and you know it's yours. Yeah. You forget about it. Uh, you don't have the time to always take taking a picture Pictures of, with, with it. it. Yeah, you know, yeah. You're not going to always want to take a picture to prove. Because you use it all because the time. Because it's yours. You're yeah. used to it. Yeah. So, if kunga yone yako. Yeah. If it's not also, yours. Also, prove it to yes. yako. Yeah. So, you will end up doing what? <laughs> taking pictures with that very ba same bag yeah. all the time because you are trying to prove to people who log in Instagram that this bag is yours. So social media is not reality. <sighs> I just wish that young girls knew that social media is not reality. Yeah. That's why, you know, my daughter is not allowed to have Instagram. She has a page on Instagram that I run because sometimes we lose phones. We, you know, so mm -hmm. I just try to save memories Collect pictures, there, yeah. you know, as much yeah. as sometimes I forget to post, but social media is not reality. That's why young girls nowadays end up finding themselves in situations that they shouldn't even, listen, a 22 year old, you should be honestly trying to find your independence at the age of 22. I, I could have done things. I wish I, I knew better when I was 22, because I can tell you for free, I would have done things differently. But the one thing I did for myself that I'm so glad that I did yeah. was get education. Yeah. Because education is something that no one will ever take away from sure, you. Sure, you sure. know, it, 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 it's you. Mm. As much as nowadays people want to portray it, it's not so important. education Because if you're educated, in knowledge, that have nothing to do with books. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah, empowers yeah. you. It empowers you. As a woman. How you think, how you direct your life. Exactly. Um, the principles that you, you stand for. The way you look at things. Yeah. And uh, let me tell you this. If Ingwati is your go-to thing instead of Instagram, you have won in life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have won in life yeah. because you are trying to empower yourself. Because lento o yila la pago Instagram, ile is ubula lo poison. Yeah. Kanti le o yila la ingwa din. Yeah. It's building you up as a person. Amy, why, after you've addressed this so many times, one, it is sensitive. Yeah. Two, it it hurt your life. It took away financially, emotionally. It it made you slip into depression. Mm. But till this day, I would say. Friendship and romantic relationships have failed you mm. because till this day, I, I will take my phone right now and there's a blog yeah. <laughs> that is saying that Amy is a liar. Amy, did, did you lie about that whole situation? The hijacking? Yeah. I would never put my kids in a situation where I would have to feed them lies. Mm. I was on a live because I was scared for my life. Yeah, a 40 and minutes live. Yes, and yeah. my kids, and I'm, I'm a very private person. People that were close to me are so shocked that I actually had to go to that extent sure. because I was still getting threats. Mm. Now, the saddest thing for me is that, um, you know, once a woman is enabling something hmm. as big as enabling, GBV, yeah. because let me tell you something about that hijacking. For me, it's so sensitive because there were guns pointed at, at us. So the guns, they started pointing at my kids first because they were in the back seat, and then they came to me. So anything could have happened. What if the guy panicked and he pulled the trigger and something happened to my kids, God forbid? What if my kids lost me? I know what it is to grow up without a mom. I don't want my babies to mm. experience that. Yeah. They could have taken me away from my children. You know, my child, till date, I could hear Armani screaming, my mom, mom, I want to help my mom when they were beating me up. There's a statement with the police, you know, um, in regards to this whole thing. So uh, how can I feed a whole 10 year old? She was 10 at the time. How can I tell her what to say, what to write? Mm. Because when you are writing a statement as a child, 
the detective is there yeah. and asking you questions. I yeah. can't respond. I sure. can't answer for my baby. You know, they are, even when this whole life was happening, there were recordings of my then husband saying to my son, the guns were not pointed at you. They were pointed at your mom. So if there was no hijacking, why were the guns pointed at me? And, you know, it's so sad that blogs are having a field day. They are. And my child goes to boarding school. Well, my kids go to boarding school. And I will other mention kids Amani have because of yeah. and My son doesn't even know what's going yeah. on. And, you know, this is, 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 is trending. I don't know how it's affecting her. So I'm at a point now, again, I have to now keep checking up on her every single day and check how she's doing because they had to go through therapy because this affected them. You know, every time my son would see that car pass by, he would say, um, there's mommy, I'm going to grow up and then I'm going to buy you a car hmm. so that um, daddy doesn't take it away from you hmm. with guns. You know, so things like that for me are so sensitive. It's something that we are going through. And in the Shunga Kul Nagogong, Ilenting is among Kulu Mange broken society. It's even all the women that are rejoicing about this. Women we looked up to growing up. Thoroughly rejoicing. Watching them on, 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 on TV and saying, this is how I want to be when I grow up. It's the very same women who are helping orchestrate. It's the very same women who are making, uh, who are having a field day about it on reality TV. You know, so for me, it's just so heartbreaking. But one thing I know for sure is that my kids and I made it out alive. And we conquered that whole situation. And now, for us, it's not even a thing because I'm a, good mom yeah i made sure my kids are good and you know that and i made sure that i'm good yeah so it doesn't even affect us as much as they wish it still affected us why do you think after so many years there's this character assassination because to me that's what it, it's coming across as there's a character assassination like if i've left you if we've left the relationship there's a period where we're hurting but surely after a certain duration like we've moved on let's yeah. live our separate lives like leave me alone i'll leave you alone yeah. i don't want to talk about you so you yeah. stop talking about me but once again these there's still people talking about this and it's still maintaining the same narrative that you lied like it's a character assassination in my opinion do you it think definitely so is. it is because yeah. you know where the problem begins when you leave your house thinking you will find better out there and you realize that no actually um what i left is something that I will never experience. Is the best. Exactly. <laughs> so, like, one thing about me, I am a good friend. I'm a good wife, and I'm a good mom. Mm. So, now, when you leave me, because I can say to, I can, till date, I can say to you, every single person that is no longer in speaking terms with me, especially friendship-wise, ask them, what did Amy do to you? Mm. Because even the same woman that is trying so hard to tarnish my name, if you're to sit her down and ask her, what did Amy do to you? What going down, Amy? She will yeah. never know what to say. Yeah. It just goes back to some people coming to befriend you because they envy your life. Some people just envy how people love you. Mm, mm, they just mm. envy your aura. Mm. There's nothing even more to it. You, I, you don't have to have millions for people to envy you. You know, So people just envy how people love you, how, how your aura is. Yeah. And... Now, my mom always used to say, yeah, yeah. So every time you see this person, it, it, it invokes this enemy within so you, this animalistic nature. Yeah. So you end up doing easy. That's why I, mean, I don't even respond to, to all these things. Yeah. They don't listen. I don't respond because I know my truth. Yeah, so they yeah. don't even shake me. They, they, they don't. And for me, if anything, it is saying you cannot sleep at night because you are thinking about me. Mm. You are paying blogs to try and tarnish my name. Because mm. because at some point, I, I used to ask myself, why do people do me so dirty? And then my dad said, That light. Exactly, there's a light that you exactly, don't see exactly. that is just guarding you and, exactly. and saving you and, and protecting you. Speaking of guarding and protection, you've shared with us that there's an element of your life that you've explored, which has to do with your ancestors. Uh, how does ancestry fit into your life? And isn't it something that has scared you? Because for many people, it's very unexpected, especially somebody who presents themselves like you do. You're very eloquent. You're very beautiful. Um, didn't it scare you, that part of your life, and having to explore it? It did. Yeah. It scared me so much to a point where I actually even, you know, I was depressed because 
I didn't want to, you know, um, so for me, it was just like, how am I going to do this? Mm. And at the time, I was still married. So my life just revolved around my family. So I was just like, how am I going to do this? It was so scary. And just thinking about it and, and young and Jeleonte that comes with it. For me, it's something that I had never imagined myself, you know, so doing. So I was really just um, in denial. And we practice in you know, mm, but mm, it's just like slaughtering. Look, good normal in, yeah, in every yeah, black family. How you would sing so humble, man? You were twasa. Yeah, yeah. But so for me, it was just a thing. Even some of my family family members were just like, you know, so um, against it, nanani. But and until do you have a better they, understanding they, right now. Yes, I do. I yeah, do. Yeah. I, I I really do now, and I understand my journey much better than cutting It's a color mm. because yes, we are good. You've you've got a gift. You know, so now when when I talk to my elders at home, I, I apparently I was such a different child from the ages of like five. Yeah. So I've always just been that child. So even my family, I was talking to my mom, she was like, you know, even all these things, all this hatred, nana, it's not um Yeah. Because if Ngembela une sipo, it's you're going to succumb to all of these sure, you know, sure, attacks. Sure. Nine, nine, nine. So it's not always going to be a smooth sailing. But now I understand it better. And I definitely know that I'm a, a water child. As much as yeah. of which I was not meant to do. Okay. Because pray over water. So I think that's why I lost weight. And so yeah, I have a better understanding of some manch. Why choose to go on a reality TV show that is known for attracting drama when you're such a private, peaceful person? So, you know, I always get this. And <laughs> not much. Even people that have been following me on social, on social media are like, I so wish Amy didn't do this. And, you know, but any do ang tandi would see umuntu ang confirm. I don't think you know ne? me. Ne? You know, but another thing is I just wanted to try something out of my comfort zone. Because sure. I've been doing my I've been doing isn't doing I'm young. So let me just try something different. And also, you know, um, I do feel like it was necessary for me to correct certain narratives. So I'm on reality TV, also user from the host's mouth. So I said what I said. Yeah, you know, so and you stand by what you I stand said. I stand by what I say. Yeah. I stand by what I say. So for me, it was just like trying something. In fact, when I hit 30. I, d I said, let me do something different. I just want to do something I never imagined myself doing. And more than anything, I wanted to grow um, as a, a businesswoman, mm -hmm. start over again. So regaining my independence. So I was like, this platform would be so amazing for me. You know, so it, yeah. it, it absolutely makes sense. Um, and and uh, uh, just to enunciate your, your thoughts on business, um, there is a culture where people want to run away from seasons where they're going through maybe a trough, they're going through a low, and they are rebuilding. Would you say you're in your rebuilding season at the moment? I'm definitely in my rebuilding season yeah. at the moment. Um, and it really feels amazing mm -hmm. because I can confidently say I am emotional stable mm. and I am emotionally independent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I know I struggled with emotional independence yeah. for the longest time. So I'm just at a point in my life right now where uh, where anyone that comes into my life is just going to be there as a lover. Nothing I else. I hear you. I hear more. you. you there's, know, no I, there's no dependence on There's no dependence on them. Yeah, you yeah. know, you are here in my life because I want you to be in my life. You know, I'm just at a point where I really don't mind it just being me and my kids. You know, so it's it's really an amazing growth. I won't lie. Are you not scared though that you will end up being so independent that you don't want to depend on anyone? Because love is beautiful at the end of the day. I'm a lover. Yeah. I am definitely a lover. And I am very feminine, you know. So I don't think that I'm going to be too independent to a point whereby I won't allow Omunyomuti to come into my life. And you know, it's nice. Love is beautiful. It's nice to have someone who tie a punch up like independence. Yeah, because you're not going to be tired. Yeah, but that's why for the moment, okay, yes, my car, now my insurance companies, passing the log day for logo, what's it, babe? My tire. Please come. Yeah, please come. <laughs> or send you know, someone. Yes, and you have days where you just want to be vulnerable, Absolutely. and you just want to be, you know, close to your person. What is life without you love? Know? What is 
Nothing's life without love. I no, always, I always no. say this. What's Count me out, Mina. No, I'm not. I'm And Jesus, um, Amy, you you coming across to me as somebody who you you exist. You've existed in a different world, and you've built yourself to be the strong, independent woman in a different world. <laughs> to become this Amy yeah. who, who has carved herself to become so classy. I mean, how was your life just in summary in Lamontville? Who was the Amy then who grew up in Lamontville? Yeah, yes, I'm so glad to we'll see you're actually bringing up the fact that I'm from Lamontville because born, bred, but it. Yeah, yeah. In Lamontville, proudly so. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, you'll you find... Okay, you'll find um, find um, 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 <laughs> yes. So you will find people thinking they're attacking me. It's not, it's not something that I've hidden. I always say it. Every interview, I always say born, bred, but it. Because it's so important. Sure. And they can relate to them. Yeah. So for me, growing up in Lamontville, it was very interesting. Um, like I mentioned, I come from a very strict background. So Ekaya, Uma Wang Fagagui all girls school, a high school, because just enjoy Balegilin Daba Zama Jo. Zama Jo, la na na ni. But I didn't. I I grew up with very little friends. Ngase Kaya, ang na babangan. I only made friends in school. So I don't have a friend in Asekai. I've just always been that person. So now you can o- you can only imagine, you know, you are just that child, you know, Gavale, Rekaya, and all of those things. And now Usu whereby there's Angas a different world. It's yeah. a bigger world. It's because big. Lamont is so it's so it is. small. As I'm saying, there's it's so small. Street names are named after people's surnames. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I think me na is strength is army and young gains I yeah. feel like Lamontville built me because I was teased a lot growing mm. up. I was teased so much and I hated my uh, my appearance, funny enough. They would even yes, they'd come at me the complexion. I remember there would be times where you know, so you know? it could be a bit darker than yes, everybody else. Oh, yes, geez. they would come at me with my height. You know, I'm a tall girl, you know, so you ended up no more than a band or circle comfortable. Yeah, more. So they teased me so much, and I didn't get the chance to even make friends, you know. So I used to even cry and say, Tell my mom, people don't like me. It's the same lights that my dad mentioned you know when i was older yeah yeah so for me i i i just feel like lamontville built me it made me you know that's why i'm so proud Uti Ngwase Lamont. yeah yeah you know and i come from the tiny house but i was raised by independent strong women with big hearts you know so my sister and i always knew that i want to come out of this place one thing about me i always knew because it's not an ideal place for anyone to live in i'm sorry yeah. You know, and after I had my daughter, yeah. I just knew that I'm not trying to raise my kids in the environment. Yeah. Because it's such a small township, you know, I'm, I, 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 mm, mm. but I, I just context. knew that yeah. I'm going to break boundaries. Yeah. You understand? And you're a you're a water baby. You're somebody who's spiritually connected to those who've carved your way and been there before you. I understand that your mother is no longer around. Yeah. Um, I know that my mother passed away in 2015, so I know to an extent what you've been through. It's never the same for all yes. of us. Um, so it's year nine for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I know your mom is listening right mm-hmm. now. Um, 30 seconds, what would you like to say to her about who you are and what Amy is right now in life? I would like to say to my mom, I, mom, I opened an NPO and I named it after you, Fundisio Foundation, because you are so giving mm. and so loving, always willing to lend a hand. And I just want you to know that I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing good. Yeah. And yeah. thank you for loving me so much when you're still alive, because it's, I still feel it till mm. date. Mm, 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 mm. Fair. Um, nearing the end of our conversation, I know some Nandi. Something I always love to ask my guests is, what's that one thing in life that you know for sure and you're absolutely certain about? The one thing in life that I know for sure is that um, my kids will never turn their backs on me. Hmm. That's why it's very important for me to have a solid relationship hmm. with them because and my family is my children. 
Amy Thompson, Engineer Your Life, thank you so much. I hope it's everything that you wanted it to be. Definitely. I hope questions that people had are going to be answered in this sincere and truthful manner that was answered today. Thank you for being honest. Thank you for being vulnerable. And just allowing us into your life because it's not any day that people must be allowed into a person's lives. Correct. Lives are private. Lives are God-given and lives should be protected at all costs. So thank you thank so you much for, for your time. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. It was so awesome. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.